So yesterday John asked me what a 10 frame deep holds if it's completely full. What does that box weigh? And I told him that I thought the box and the honey combined is usually around 80 pounds if it's really full. And today we're going to find out for sure. So we've got a box with 10 frames in it. Of course if it had 9 frames in it, it would weigh a little more. But let's weigh the full one and then weigh the empty one. Let's see what we got. Eighty-three pounds on the full one. So yeah, I wasn't too far off. Yeah. That's an empty one. Same equipment, same box manufacturer. You know, frames are close. That's an empty, and it weighs twenty-two pounds. So that means we have sixty-one pounds of honey in that box, with a gross weight of eighty-three pounds. That's a five-gallon bucket. That's a five-gallon. That's exactly what that is. Yeah, that's, that's a five-gallon cool. bucket of honey. Indeed. Doesn't seem five like gallon. that box should hold a five-gallon bucket of honey, but that's exactly what's in there. It's like a half a gallon per mm -hmm. frame. Well, thank you, John. Now I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this yard didn't do all that great. There was a super on almost every colony, but they probably averaged about two-thirds of a super. It does not taste like sourwood. I'm guessing it's clover or something. But we're trying to extend our number of escapes by putting multiple supers on one escape and that's okay and yeah that colony might end up with a few more bees than the rest but I think most people would be surprised to find out how many bees know their way home and when they exit through the escape and down through the colony they actually end up back in their original colony there, there's no fighting I don't ever see issues doing this and uh, we've only got a little over 300 escapes and this is one way of kind of extending what we have and making it stretch farther. Um, we're up in northern Georgia today just trying to get the sourwood off before it gets tainted with other stuff. In this yard there is no sourwood so it's not a big deal but I know yards just north of here do have a little sourwood in them. So, we've taken the honey off. Go ahead and let's lift that skateboard. What we're seeing is that there's a little bit of burr comb underneath the skateboards, which tells us, of course, that the bees were still making honey when we took them off. That one didn't make any at all, Bob. Yeah. This yard actually is tasting like sourwood. I think this is going to be a sourwood yard. So, I just wanted to explain what's happening here. We, uh, we left a few pounds of honey behind. They could have made more. But we got so many yards that I can't really strip them all off in a week's time. And we've got to start early on some locations just to make sure we keep other honeys from mixing in with our sourwood. This location actually is already showing signs in the supers of uh, sumac honey. Kind of looks like dirty dish water in the comb. Look at, they're starting to rob on there. So I guess that means the honey flow is over after all. We lifted up these supers. Today's Tuesday. What were we here, Thursday or Friday, and put the escapes on? Mm -hmm. So it looks like this. they got two or three days of flow in them before it's uh, slowing down. That robbing right there tells me that the flow's over, or at least winding down. So all in all, I think our timing was pretty good. Yeah, beautiful spot. Quiet, so you really quiet out here. Mm -hmm. Peaceful. Huh? Peaceful. Peaceful. So this yard averaged about a super or super and a half per colony. When we lifted the supers up and put them on top of escape boards, we, we shared escape boards. You know, two colonies would use the same escape board. It's not an issue. No reason we can't do that. Bees, I've never seen fighting or anything like that. That way we can go twice as far with the escape boards we have. So these were put on the escapes about five days ago. Should be plenty clear of bees. This is only about a mile away from the last yard, which had sourwood in it, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this tastes exactly the same way. We will see. Well, this yard was indeed identical to the other one. They were pretty good on the sourwood. 
nice honey. Now that I'm getting all this honey pulled off, I'm starting to get anxious to start mite treatments. In my view, probably the sooner the better at this point. We don't see big numbers, but I don't want to see big numbers. We have a limited amount of bee escapes and a lot of colonies to get the honey off fast. So in this yard, we have some double deeps with a super or two and no excluder. We rarely put a queen excluder above a double deep. We find that it restic restricts the honey production a bit on a double deep. On a single, in a good honey flow, we don't see much restriction of the honey production. So, let's see, how do I explain this? The double deeps do not have an excluder, so I will not take the supers off of those and put them on other colonies because there's a small chance the queen could be wandering around in the super. If we keep that super over the escape on the same colony, many times the queen finds her way down, or when we come back to pull the honey, we'll spot her because we see a cluster of bees above the escape. Now with the single story colonies that have an excluder, there's no danger of that. So when we're done working this yard, what we'll see is the double deeps will have a number of supers on them over the escape, and many of the singles will have none. And the reason for that is because, again, there shouldn't be any queens above the excluders, but there could be queens above the double deep in the super because there is no excluder. That's where all the supers are going to end up to make sure that we don't accidentally shuffle a queen to another colony, if that makes sense. All right, there's two issues with the escape boards. We use them, we like them. The first issue is that you have to make two trips. And the second issue is if there's no nectar flow, if there's a hole that the bees can get into anywhere, and they will rob the boxes above the escape out. I haven't even lifted the lid yet. I don't know where they're getting in and out, but they're, it's right here. It's right here. They're coming and going right here. See? So we, we carry a roll of uh, uh, stretch wrap type of wrapping you'd put on a pallet or something like that and we'd stuff in holes like that. Yes, sir. Now the whole yard's in robbing mode. When we pulled up, they're already on the truck trying to rob. Yeah. So, I mean, look at you pop the lid and look at how fast they're robbing. And it's all because of that right there. We need a bigger warehouse. We do. Dave's unloading the gamber truck and uh, uh, it's really getting tough. Okay, hang in there. Seth is loading our flatbed trailer with sticky supers to take out to the post office yard to get them robbed out. And it's just getting crazy around here as far as space. Got trucks of honey coming in every day. Not every day, every week. Empty supers will be out of here soon, that'll help a lot. Another two, two weeks, maybe three at the most, of empty supers and extracting, that'll make a big difference.
Okay, so we apparently have more beehives than we thought because we ran out of rims. These are the rims that you would use to put on top of a colony if you're feeding pollen patties or doing an apron guard treatment or something like that. We just made them out of scrap lumber. Jason cut the wood, John and Selena are putting them together. Real simple. Oh yeah. Yeah. Little rabbit joint there. They're going together easy, huh, John? Oh yeah, really easy. Yeah. So we need 230 more for tomorrow. So you know what the problem is, Selena? Beehives are like rabbits. <laughs> when you turn around, you've got a lot more than you had the last time you looked. Right. <laughs> Seth is busy wrapping pallets of supers to go to the cooler. These supers have been robbed out, and we're going to put them in rented cooler space for the winter. They're done being used for the season. Um, Got a lot of supers to get ready. Every day, every couple days, we take that trailer down to one of our bee yards full of supers for the bees to rob out, get them clean so we can put them in cold storage for the winter. Well, I couldn't help myself this morning. I wanted to take a little video of our flower garden. We're gonna take a company picture this morning and uh, we're tidying up the flower garden so it'll look pretty. It'll be something for our website. Jack's here. He's going to take our picture. And John and Brandon are cleaning up a few things before we do the picture. Anyway, we really like our sunflowers. They look gorgeous. I'm sure if Ian Stepler sees this picture, he'll laugh and say, that ain't no sunflower patch. <laughs> well, it's pretty big for us. And then we're going to plant another one right down there, kind of a successive planting thing. These aren't anything fancy, we just bought some bird seed and planted it. And then those right next to Brandon are rare native species of sunflowers. Jack gave them to me a couple years back and they're gorgeous later on in late September. They look like weeds right now, but they'll be something in a couple months. And of course the rest of the garden is just perennials and annuals. We do this every year. I it's something I've been doing for decades. I like perennials. I like flower gardens. Can't help myself. When I was a kid, I used to help my grandmother weed her flower garden, and I hated it. Now I love them. John, you're doing a good job. Thank you, sir. That's what I'm here for. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, the weeds take over pretty quick. Looks like it's time to weed the garden again, Nathan. Yes, sir. I see that. we got to do it once a week or they take over. And this time of year. I like this Russian, Russian sage stuff. Yeah. It smells good. It, it, it does, good. yeah. The bees like it, too. Nice little pale touch to it. The phlox has been beautiful. It's starting to wane a bit, but uh, I put on a uh, show for about a month, really. Mm -hmm. This hibiscus thing over here is about to take off those uh those flowers are huge you haven't seen them yet brandon they're as big as a dinner plate yeah. oh look at that we got a little uh, a little um goldenrod coming up there that's a weed nobody pulled it they must have thought it was a flower <laughs> <laughs> no it looks good let's leave it yeah we'll just leave it this stuff put on a pretty good show. It's it's about over. That's that's part of the challenge here is knowing what to pull, what's a weed and what's not. Well, we got an expert on our hands here. We had some beautiful iris up there in the front this spring. Boy, they were gorgeous. Jack gave them to me. They're exotic uh, irises from around the world. And pretty neat stuff. We need to have these made and stock them in the store. <laughs> is it the beekeeper? If it's Ha <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha That's hey, awesome. Hey, Kevin's gonna love it. Kevin's gonna love it. That's his thing, King Bob. I think, I think you should, Bob. That that'll work. Well, the people really want you on the 
on the front. Right. Well, that ain't gonna happen. I know, but <clears throat> I, I can put hey, two and two together. On the back, you need to put. I put that on my peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. You need like a picture it. off your banana bomb. You need that picture on the yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah. That see. picture's perfect. What size that is it? Like can you imagine Bob oh, it's, wearing it's, it's it? It's too big for you. Yeah. Hey, it is. is the it? most interesting man in the world. Please wear that one day, Bob. Please. I'm not gonna wear that. Oh come on. <laughs> That's why I was going to see if I put it on you. I need to. You no, need we want to see you king. wear it. You are the king, Bob. You are the uh, king, Bob. Well, yeah, I, 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 I'll buy that. A king minion, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, <laughs>